Although you could have done the lab with just the simple skills that I've demonstrated, I do want to show you that it is possible to get a z-test computed directly using JASP. So let's take a look at how we do this, and it'll actually be useful in the next weeks because it is in the same spot that we'll find the t-test that we perform. So here's the data set you're going to use, and I'm going to just model how you could do a z-test to answer questions about, for example, whether or not your observed mean for a sample of data matches some expected value. Now, this z-test will use the data from your sample for the variability because we haven't given the measure of variability. So it's not known. When the measure of variability is unknown, we generally will use t-tests. However, this week while we're practicing, we're using t-tests for instructional purposes here. So how could you do a z-test inside of JASP? If you go to the t-test dropdown and you go to one sample t-test, when you open that up, you'll get a default to do students t-test. However, you'll notice that you can put in the z-test. Now, if you put in the z-test value, you can indicate the test value and the standard deviation that you expect. So you can put in these population values. Now, if you use the data for a student's t-test, you'll notice that it only wants you to put in the expected value. It does not want you to put in the standard deviation. Now, in this case, we were going to use the standard deviation from our data because we weren't given a standard deviation. So that's where you technically would be doing a t-test, which we'll learn about next week. But for instructional purposes, practicing this process, we are focusing here on the z-test. So you could get, you know, you remember how to get all your descriptors. So say I was going to do it for the year 1982, and I could come in and I can get my standard deviation, and it's 0 0.061. So I can use that standard deviation as an estimate of my population standard deviation. Okay, so 0 0.061. So then if I want to do the t-test for this data, I can use 0 0.061 as my standard deviation. And I just specify that right there. And the test value was zero in your lab. I can drag over my data, and here I get, for that year, the Z value ends up being 1.95, and the P value is 0 0.051. So there I just got my Z and P by just putting in those pieces of information and dragging over the variable. Now next week, we'll be focusing on using the student T test. And you see here with the student T test, only the test value, which is the expected mean, is present. And with only that value being present, it will use the estimate from your sample for the population standard deviation. So it'll use this number. But you see, there's one other thing that affects a t-test, and that is your degree of freedom term. And so we'll talk more about this degree of freedom next week. But you see, when you do a z-test, it has no degree of freedom. So our two answers are very similar, and we'll understand more about that next week when we consider degrees of freedom. But there's how we can quickly get a z statistic and p-value for something using JASP. It also shows you how to do a one-sample t-test using JASP, which will be the required content in the next section.